we're here now at Huntington State Park and I think you have seen me here before last time when I went mountain biking and so um, we're actually here riding our, our road bike heading over to Bering Hill Beach in Westport. Something that I wanted to give my first time subscribers and uh, also subscribers who've been with us for from the beginning uh, a little bit about Jason so I'll ask him a few questions and uh, he'll answer them for you. Uh, I'm 38 going on, I'll be 39 in April, so I'm kind of like 38 and a half. And how did you get started with cycling? Uh, well, I started riding, Joy and I started riding a little bit a few years ago, um, just on a very very limited basis sometimes when we went on trips we would you know ride our, our hybrid bikes around uh, but how I got into road cycling was um, I actually got I actually had a knee injury last year and was having surgery for that and was on crutches uh, for a while and during that time when I was on crutches Joy started getting into um, to road cycling she started going on a few routes by herself and she was really getting into it um, you know and so I would hear a lot about it from her and when I uh, got off the crutches from the knee surgery and did a little physical therapy uh, the doctor said you can't run yet but you can ride a bike so I said okay I'll uh, you know I'll start riding a bike and um, you know, join Joy for, for some of these rides. And I pretty much got hooked on it um, shortly after I started riding. And around this time last year was when, you know, I really started riding on a regular basis. And so a year later, um, I still haven't really started running again yet. Um, I, uh, I still have issues with my knee, unfortunately. Uh, that at this point it's looking like something I'm gonna have to live with um, so I'm still not quite able to run right now I'm not giving up on running but um, putting that to, to the side for a while because you know I found cycling and I really love doing this and um, cy cycling became my my main form of exercise Catch me out of line. Teach me how to climb. you can skip a dime but you can you get hooked on cycling uh well i like how it's especially when we go for outdoor rides it's like a combination of a workout and an adventure so i think that's really what what hooked me into it and i also i've always enjoyed doing intense exercise so i enjoy the, the climbing even though i'm not i've never I was really bad at climbing when we first started riding. I'm getting a little bit better. I'm still not great at climbing, but I, I really like doing high intensity efforts. So I like um, when we do our outdoor rides, especially around where we live, it's very hilly. So it's uh, you can kind of get some, some short, hard efforts in at the same time that you're doing the long ride. And so I, I really enjoy that. I, I like going for PRs on the, the Strava segments and, and all that stuff, it you know, makes the rides extra fun. And um, the main thing that, that hooked me though was just that Joy also like, loves to ride and the fact that we found this hobby that we both enjoy equally. And it's, it, it's a hobby that does consume a lot of time, but I'm, I think it's time well spent because we're spending more time together than we would be if, if one of us wasn't riding. Uh, so that's probably the best thing about it. My most best memory you had, you best. have so far cycling. Yeah, um, so there's a few that are, there's a few times that, that are memorable. I'll save the best one for last. Uh, one that's, um, that's definitely memorable was when we were um, 
when we were on vacation in Utah and we went to uh, Zion National Park and we, we rode a little bit through uh, Zion but the, the ride that I really remember was um, one of our last days there we went up near uh, Bryce Canyon and did mountain biking and that was um, that was I think um, that was I, it was definitely my first time mountain biking I think it was also Joy's first time mountain biking and it was a very uh, very challenging ride. I think it was about a 30 mile um, route. Um, and but part of that was getting from the, the rental place to, uh, you know, to the trail. Uh, anyway, we uh, when we got up to the, the top of the, the mountain and started to descend, uh, it, it, there were thunderstorms and we ended up getting trying to seek shelter up on the mountain. Of course, there's there wasn't a lot of shelter there, so we pretty much just huddled up, you know, curled into you know the fetal position, getting pelted with with rain, you know, waiting for the storm to pass. And uh, fortunately, we we survived it. Um, that was uh, definitely a memorable experience, but not not the best memory. Um, it, it was a great, it was a really fun ride up until that point, but that kind of kind of spoiled it a little bit. But my my favorite memory um, that we've had so far is the DIY Grand Fondo ride that we did last year, which we called the Connecticut Grand Fondo. Um, that was just Joy and I doing our our longest ride to uh, to date um, as a replacement for the Vermont Grand Fondo that got canceled and. Uh, I don't remember the exact stat, stats of, of that route, but that was, um, it was just really fun. We were out there all day. The weather was great. Um, it was very physically demanding uh, for us at the time. It was actually, it would be an interesting test. We've talked about redoing that route sometime and, you know, seeing what it feels like in comparison now that we're perhaps a little bit fitter. But at the time it was very challenging. But it was also a, a great adventure and a uh, great accomplishment because we had been training for you know almost six months uh, to, to get to that point. To someone who is who, who wants to start up cycling, what advice would you give them? Um, well, I suppose that it depends on what their goals are but if they're looking to improve their their fitness and their cycling performance you know in other words um getting stronger and faster and, and things like that which is sort of one of my goals uh so if there's someone that has sim has similar goals to that i would definitely suggest following a structured training plan and there's probably a lot of places you can find them. There's we we we've done some training plans from Training Peaks and have been uh, happy with that. I know there's also Trainer Road out there that has plans, um, but you know, we've had good success with Training Peaks. It, it helps to follow a a structured plan that's written up by a coach who you know has more experience than um, than someone like like I have. Um, so, it, it, and it takes the guesswork out of it. You can just search for a plan based on what your your goals are, like what, what type of ride you want to train for. And then, um, you know, you'll, you can find a plan that's tailored to that goal. And um, yeah, I guess that would be my, my uh, word of advice is to follow a structured training plan. They definitely work if you can find a good one that matches your goals. So let's just say that they don't necessarily know if they want to, I mean, they're, they're really beginner, beginner. Like, do you still suggest that for them to do a structured training plan? Um, well, if, if, if you're a, if you're a beginner and you're not really sure. And you don't have fitness yet. Like you don't have anything. Yeah. Then in, in that case, I mean, there's probably plans out there for beginners that are designed just to you know give you a base base level of fitness 
so you could try searching for that otherwise I would say you just try to spend some time on the bike uh, it helps to it's helped us to have stationary bikes at home uh, so either getting a, a stationary bike or a, um, a trainer that you can attach your bike to uh, helps to be able to to train indoors because you know the weather is not always going to be suitable for riding outside um, however talking about riding outside as a beginner it's it's also really important to learn riding skills you know how to navigate traffic and um, you know ride uh, kind of coexist with traffic and um, you know just to be aware of your aware of your surroundings at all times you know alert at all times and um, if you're really getting serious into cycling and you, you want to you know have clipless pedals and all of that, that that'll be another learning curve that you have to go through to, to learn how to clip and unclip um, but yeah I guess it really depends on uh, what your level of experience is and, and what what you really want to do with cycling I can only speak for myself and what we've been doing and um, my my goal getting into cycling was kind of two things it was one to to just get the basic cycling skills be you know somewhat proficient at riding outside and um, you know build up my endurance so that I can do longer rides and we can you know go on our adventures and then as a um, you know kind of a, a side a side goal to that was just to, uh, to improve my my fitness and improve my power my speed and everything like that so when I when I do my indoor rides there I kind of use my indoor rides for my intensity workouts and you know trying to get stronger and then use our outdoor rides to build endurance so um, for me I think um, if you are a super beginner and you are unsure yet of where you are with your fitness I would definitely suggest just going out for a ride and just enjoying it you know don't worry about getting a power meter don't worry about doing interval workouts because what you really want to do is um, see if you actually enjoy cycling because you don't want to spend a whole lot of money on a even $800 which is I believe the uh, entry level bike these days that's still a lot of money for a lot of people and so don't go out and buy a whole new bike and then find find out that an $800 bike and find out that you know you you don't actually enjoy um, cycling so you know go out there and if you have an old bike get that bike outside and just go around uh, right around the neighborhood and just really get a feel of uh, how your body responds to that um, to that level of intensity or if you have like hills like how does your body respond to it and definitely do not feel discouraged when you are out of breath because I know for when I first started riding I had a hybrid and I would just go around the, the uh, neighborhood and um, sometimes I would take it around the um, it, the roads that we would ride typically ride on and I remember the climb that I I have the QOM on uh, when I rode that up on the hybrid it was awful I actually threw up at the very top of the hill that's how hard it was and that's because of the gearing right the gear ratio that road bikes have is completely different from a hybrid and so don't feel like just because you can't pedal up a hill on a hybrid that doesn't mean you can't you know you can't improve on your fitness don't let that discourage you just always work on it and again just continue to ride your bike and um, it really is an enjoyable experience um, just being out and about like we came we just rode to the beach from our house like 70 miles or so but anyway I just think that you should all just really enjoy your your rides first before you go dive into intervals and dive into hard efforts because then you're gonna hate it and you're gonna be like why did I get myself into this and you're gonna stop what you're doing and never take up cycling again so just ride and don't worry about people people pass us all the time people pass me all the time when we ride and, and don't worry about that just worry about how you can be a, in better fitness um, moving forward if this is something that you want to get into